We like board games for a lot of reasons. They are social platforms for developing relationships, engaging mental challenges, and they convey multitudes of immersive stories. But no matter what reason you are playing them, good games are elevated by great art, and today I'll be talking about three of my favorite artists working in the biz today. First is Quan Chai Moria. A few short years ago, Moria had been an avid tabletop gaming fan when he posted fan art for the niche dexterity dungeon crawl catacombs. His artwork transformed the gothic world into an adorable cartoon, perfectly straddling the line between goofy and serious. Colorful, vibrant, imaginative, and stylish, Quan Chai was approached to do the official artwork for Catacombs 3rd edition, which was the game's major breakthrough. Since then, Quan Chai has illustrated RPGs, cover art, in-game assets, and plenty of non-gaming projects, including children's books. Like many of my favorite artists, he works with different styles and mediums while maintaining a signature core aesthetic. Of all the artists working regularly in the hobby, Quan Chai is the one who I can best trace influences. It's easy for me to see the lineage of iconic comic artists like Jim Lee and Bill Sienkiewicz, as well as animators ranging from Matt Groening to Pendleton Ward. And while I have a persistent affection for his timeless Catacombs character designs, it's hard to beat the beauty that is his box art for Dinosaur and Dulasaur Island. There is a long tradition of French illustration and pop animation, but no French artist has put such a big stamp on tabletop gaming as Vincent Dutrait. Simultaneously cartoonish and yet strikingly realistic, Dutrait conveys so much complexity in his characters, each a portrait worthy of contemplation. And while Dutrait has masterfully handled a wide variety of settings, his core style is more consistent than Moria's, giving a signature and immediately recognizable look that elevates the profile of any game that he graces. And while I could go on and on about every game made better by Dutrait's artwork, to me, no games have been better serviced by his style than Lewis and Clark and the follow-up Lewis and Clark Discoveries. Every single character card, every animal represented, the box art, the landscapes, would make excellent showpieces in any art collection. I mean it when I say that no depiction of North American westward exploration has ever made such a profound impact on me as the artwork in these games. This last one is kind of a cheat, but I have my rationale. Mr. Cuttington is actually art team and real-life power couple Lena Cossette and David Forrest, but unlike many studios or art teams, they work seamlessly to create unified artwork as though they were one person. I first noticed Mr. Cuttington with the incredible character designs in Roxley Santorini, creating the cutest depictions of iconic Greek deities this side of Hercules, but the characters go beyond their adorable, super deformed shape. Each manages to convey personality about the character's role in their pantheon as well as their role in the game. And while Santorini is great and I loved Charterstone, I foolishly mistook them as one-trick ponies. It wasn't until I saw Roxley's Brass Lancashire in Birmingham, then Druid City's Titan blades that I understand the full extent of Mr. Cuttington's prowess. Captivating, versatile, and able to infuse the tone of a game into the very nature of the artwork, Mr. Cuttington is absolutely one of my favorite artists in the biz. What do you think of our list? Did we nail some of your faves or did we miss some that you want to tell us about? Or do you have your own suggestions for future topics? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we are evolving the cardboard cutout series to be more of this off-camera medium. If you dug this video and want to support us, please like, subscribe, and let others know how to check us out. Thanks for watching. This has been the Cardboard Herald.